I'm back on this exercise bike. Once again, y'all, I'm keeping it going. I'm keeping it going, keeping this weight down, keeping that 18 pounds that I lost off. So this video is going to be about the person or the visitor that's sitting there with the narcissist at their home versus the incoming call. So what I mean by this is, I don't know if you've ever had an experience where you're at the narcissist's home and they're being cruel or mean or they're in a bad mood. Nothing can go right. They're in this on and off mood swing with you. Okay. And you're in the home, but a call comes in, right? And this call can be not from a side piece or somebody that they messing with. I'm talking about, they get an incoming call from a family member, right? And remember this, a lot of times people will not visit narcissist homes. You will notice that it's not because they don't want them there or nothing like that. It's just people just know not to go. They've already had a bad experience, but then you still go and you sitting there and you watching the narcissist answer this phone call. So this is what I saw with my own eyes and ears, right? So I'm sitting there, the narcissist gets this call in from this relative, right? And their whole voice be just, just becomes fake. And they do this laugh. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Um, oh yeah. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. The narcissist is mainly listening to what the person is saying. And don't let it be a couple calling. In this particular situation, it was a couple calling. It was a relative and their significant other, right? And you could just see the hatred on the narcissist's face and the heightened level of envy that this narcissist had for their own relative and the significant other. And let me point this out too. In the past, the narcissist had even said to me that that particular relative significant other, they wouldn't take care of them if they got sick. I mean, it was many, many years ago that the narcissist made this cruel statement. And it was just for no reason out of the blue, just saying, I, I wouldn't take care of him or her or this, this and that. So... And then I watched this narcissist, as soon as they got off that phone, they went right back into this complete bad mood. But it was so hard for that narcissist to maintain that phone conversation. And it was just so fake, y'all. It was just so fake. It was just so fake. And the person on the other end, not to say they never tell the narcissist they love them, but they didn't get that through the phone. This person that called in, which was the relative that called the narcissist, they didn't tell the narcissist they loved them. Now me on the other end, not to brag, but I got an incoming call and I was sitting on this same couch with the narcissist, right? And I got a, I love you. And I said, I love you back to the person that called me, right? And that narcissist was furious. I know they were. But see, the reason I'm pointing that out is the people that call the narcissist, these relatives that won't visit this narcissist, they always have to be disingenuous in some kind of way. I mean, you gotta remember the whole conversation is fake. The significant other probably was making the relative call. Like call your, call your uncle, call your papa, call your grandpa, call your grandma, call your mama, call your auntie. You know, some of these phone calls that are made to these narcissists are forced, y'all. These people be on the other end basically like fighting with their significant others. No, I don't want to call him or her. No, please don't make me call him. But they got that 
empathic significant other that basically makes them at least have a phone relationship with their narcissist relative. So I saw this for myself, y'all, and it's ugly. Um, that's someplace I just won't be back to. I don't want to see no more of it, but I just saw how the narcissist behaves. And remember, you took your time to go visit the narcissist. You went to this narcissist's home and they still were very rude and disrespectful. Might have even had an angry outburst. But then they'll treat somebody on the phone better that won't even come out to their house to see them. Make that make sense. You treating people better that basically then discarded you. That's what narcissists do. They treat people better that's already discarded and dumped them off. For real. That's how they are. And so when you around people and you getting this energy, watch how they act on that phone. When you sitting at their house, apartment, or residence, just watch how they act. Even if you live in the house with them, watch how they act on that phone. And it's not the same way that they treating their relatives as sitting right there with them. I mean, they have the inability to show genuine love and care for who's sitting right there in their face. Make that make sense to me. It just doesn't make sense. The only thing that makes sense out of all of it is they are narcissists. And obviously, this is a personality disorder. This is a mental health issue. This person is a different kind of crazy. So, yeah, I just hope this makes sense. But just watch how they be talking. I'm telling you, I was sitting there like, what? Because the person was like, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, that's good. Uh-huh. Really? Uh-huh. They ain't really, really engaging in the conversation. They just doing all this <laughs> fake laughing. I mean, just so fake, y'all. I mean... I'm like, wow. And you be like wishing that the person, like you could switch what roles. Like, let me be the person that's calling them and they could bring the caller to sit here on this couch with they self. So that's how you be thinking. Like, why am I here? I will not be back. And never express that to the narcissist. Don't ever say, well, I'm not coming back here. Just pack your stuff, politely leave a house, end it on a good note. Don't get yourself shot or harmed because you're telling this armed narcissist you're not coming back. Just don't return. And don't be returning to somebody's house that's having that many mood swings and they collecting weapons. I mean, this is a literal situation I was in. That's why I'm telling y'all, the more I get comfortable with my channel, I'll share more. I mean, you're dealing with somebody that's collecting weapons, but they 50 different people within 50 minutes. I mean, this could be a situation where out of the blue, you walk in the kitchen and they shoot you in your back or something. You know, you got to watch people because you just never know when people are going to snap and people are snapping a lot in this world anyway. So just be very, very careful with these type of situations because you don't want to underestimate anything, even if they had have not threatened you. Um, don't ever underestimate. And sometimes they have threatened you and you still giving them a chance. Oh, well, he or she won't shoot me. Yeah, keep thinking that. But, um, and that's what narcissists do. They also try to control their environments with those weapons too. Cause I mean, that's all they got. That's all they got is they weapons. Like ain't none of them ever got up and not to say they all cowards, right? I'm not saying that, but I don't know if you've ever had a physical confrontation, but I didn't need to always. I ain't had a bunch of fights, but I am going to say this. I don't, 
always need no gun. I didn't always need no weapon to whoop somebody or to defend myself. Who does that? Like, okay, she a woman. I'm a woman. We fighting. I beat her up. We ain't armed. What's the issue? Why I need a knife to whoop somebody's butt? But see, narcissists, they such cowards. Like, they just sit there with their pistols like, like, damn, you ain't never had a, a just true boxing match, even if you was play fighting when you was a kid. Remember the play fight days? Like, you got to sit up there with your pistol, and you be sitting there looking like, look, step away from the pistol and we could handle this. I mean, because that's the type of attitude that you begin to have with these narcissist because at the end of the day that's just some cowardly shit to just be sitting up around your weapon and then they act like somebody gonna do something to their ass when in all reality they're the perpetrators they're the predators so who really needs the gun is the empathic person i need the fucking gun not the damn sick ass narcissist they're sitting up posted with the weapon. But see, the reason they do that, y'all, is because they do so much shit to people. They talk so much cruel shit to people. They just run their mouth. They violate people. Date rape people. Call people out of their names. Not paying people their money back. Lying to people. They do so much of this type of stuff, they feel like they have to have that weapon. They just feel like they have to because they just are paranoid that what they dish out will come back or somebody is going to get so mad because of something they did long, long time ago that it's going to come back on them. And... The fact that the matter is, having a gun doesn't stop anything from coming back on somebody when the Lord puts it down. When the Lord's ready for you and your day of karma is here, it's nothing you can do. That gun not going to do nothing for you. The narcissist gun will do nothing for them. Okay, so I hope this makes sense. I'm on this bike, y'all. I'm almost 13 minutes in. Still got this lemonade. Please like, share, and subscribe. And thank you so, so much. Thank you. Oh, please leave a comment. I love the comments. And I enjoy the comments. I learn so much from your comments. And also your comments help others know and understand more about this cluster B personality, which is narcissism. Okay? Again, Please like, share, and subscribe, and comment. Thank you.